Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you and a very happy International Yoga Day. I hope that you all must be doing something for your physical as well as mental health and yoga is one of the best ways that you can adopt to keep your mind and your body healthy and separately you don't have to devote time for mental exercises because yoga in itself establishes a connection between the body and the mind. So on that note, let's begin today's current affairs. Okay, so guys, let me inform you that this is our application. You can download it from the Google Play Store. And here you will get a lot of offerings, facilities like daily GK, daily PDFs, daily live updates, past year updates, toppers, strategies, and many more things. So you can download it Google, from Google Play Store and try your hand at it. Now, before moving on to anything else, let me inform you that you can connect with us through call Monday to uh, Saturday 9 to 6 p.m. This is our website and this is the mail that you can uh, send to us if you have any uh, query in your preparation if you need any kind of guidance. Okay, apart from these three channels, we have one more channel that is our discussion forum discussions.anujindal.in. So here you can post your queries and we directly reply to your queries. One more thing, guys, the PDF of this session is available at this moment on the telegram channel so you can download it and keep the pdf beside you so that when i am telling you the content you are not only listening it but you are also seeing the content in the form of the pdf okay so let's begin with the first question external affairs minister dr s j shankar along with his counterpart from vietnam bui than song has launched a joint logo to commemorate the 50 years of India-Vietnam diplomatic relations. Which of the following birds are portrayed in the logo? So here you have peacock, crane, Victoria crown pigeon, only A and B, and only A in the option. What do you think is the right answer here? The right answer is option D, peacock and crane. Peacock is the bird of national importance in India, whereas crane is the bird of national importance in Vietnam. So let's have a look at the logo as well. This is guys the logo. And here you can see 50 because this logo has been released in commemoration of the 50 years of diplomatic relations between India and Vietnam. Apart from this, one more MOU was also signed uh, on cyber security, okay, between India and Vietnam. So that's all about this news. <coughs> Now let's move on to the uh, point where we started our session from, that is the Yoga Day. So what is the theme of the International Yoga Day 2022? So here guys, Yoga for Humanity is the theme. Okay. So first of all, I have already told you that today is Yoga Day and Yoga for Humanity is the theme. But on this day, Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has launched the, Inter uh, the National Yoga Olympiad 2022 and a quiz competition in New Delhi. So what you have to memorize from this news is that the National Yoga Olympiad and the competition, quiz competition was organized in New Delhi because location is important. You can expect a question on the location. Apart from this, the Ministry of Education in collaboration with NCERT has organized this event this is not very important you can skip this part as well but this statement and this statement these two are important now uh this picture is for your additional information it tells you the origin of yoga so this is the book by patanjali yes the patanjali brand which is promoted by ramdev baba actually patanjali is the name of the saint who had written the yoga sutra the basic origin of the yoga so that's an additional fact no need to memorize anything uh, that was all about the yoga now let's move on to the next question where was india's biggest ever international literary festival unmesh organized so basically it is also termed as the celebration of expression okay literature is nothing but the expression of your emotions so, it is termed as India's largest international literary festival and it was organized at the Getty Theatre, okay? Now, where is this theatre located? So, it is in Shimla, Himachal Pradesh. Apart from this, one more important fact here is that Booker Prize winner, Gitanjali Shri, 
so she has won the booker prize in this year only for her book tomb of sand so she has addressed this festival so do remember this point apart from this the location would be asked from you in the examination so that much is enough for you to memorize from exam point of view now this is guys i know it's a bit blur picture but this is the uh, festival that is uh, that has taken place in shimla and guys this is gitanjali shri who has won the book of prize okay moving on to the next question at which university's campus is the br ambedkar school of economics located so you have the five options out of which bangalore university is the right answer now why are we discussing it first of all you need to know this fact that this br ambedkar school of economics is already functional okay it is there inside the bangalore university's campus for years now and Prime Minister Narendra Modi has visited Karnataka, and during his visit, he is going to re-inaugurate, basically, uh, inaugurating the already functioning institution. Okay, so that is the news because of which this particular institution is in the news and is in front of you. So I have already told you what the news all about. You can read it on your. moving ahead to the next question which is very important so which bank's it resources have been termed as critical information infrastructure besides npcis upi okay so we have axis bank state bank of india icici bank only a and b and only c so some of you who don't know the answer who haven't read this news already would say that sbi must be the right answer but guys actually sbi is not the right answer the right answer is e okay now here one more thing that i want to tell you that whenever you get options like these only c only a so please mark this as the answer because in this case this would be the most appropriate way to mark your answer only c that is icici bank instead of marking c as your option you should mark e because only c is written here okay now let's move on to the news so ministry of electronics and it first of all this announcement has not been made by ministry of finance ministry of commerce or any other kind of ministry it is by the ministry of electronics and it okay so it has announced that the it resources of icici bank hdfc bank and the upi of npci national payment corporation of india all these three it resources are the critical infrastructure uh, critical information infrastructure so what is critical information infrastructure according to the information technology act of 2000 critical information infrastructure is basically the infrastructure that is too big and too important for our economy that the economy of the nation does not cannot afford to uh, these cannot afford these systems to fail okay so that is the meaning of critical information infrastructure i hope that is clear no need to remember this definition given in the act itself that is just for your information but yes do remember the act which defines the critical infrastructure uh, information infrastructure and besides this the act itself gives the power to the central government to allocate or designate any of the it resources as the critical inf information infrastructure okay and by using this act only ministry of electronics has designated these three infrastructures as important now what is the implication of de de designating these infrastructures the importance or the implication is that now the national critical infrastructure information infrastructure protection center this ncipc is going to protect the it resources of these uh, three organizations okay moving ahead when is the sustainable gastronomy day celebrated so guys june 18 is the right answer now on june 18 we have one more day that is international day for countering hate speech and this is guys an important day both of these days are important so this is easy to understand what the crux of this day is 
the day aims to spread awareness about the hate speech and the theme of this day is the role of education to address the root causes of hate speech and advance inclusion non discrimination and peace now whenever you come across such big themes you have to find out the key words okay so key words are education root cause hate speech inclusion discrimination and peace okay non discrimination and peace so these are the keywords once you memorize the keywords and the day itself if you listen if you can memorize the entire theme then it is very very good but if you have problem in memorizing such big themes then you can uh, remember the keywords only and through the keywords you can easily guess that which is the right theme because you get five options okay in the uh, question so that is all about the international day for countering the hate speech now what is gastronomy have you ever wondered what is sustainable gastronomy we come across this day every year we study it in the spotlight but what is it exactly so yes gastronomy is related to food gastronomy means basically uh, to choose the right kind of food the right kind to cook the right kind of food and to eat the right kind of food that is good for our health okay that is the basic idea of gastronomy to choose the art of choosing the good food is gastronomy but when we attach the word sustainable to gastronomy then it means that we are also considering the place the method through which the food has been grown for example many of india's agricultural products are rejected overseas why because they have a lot of fertilizer content now fertilizer is not only bad for the health of the people but fertilizer too much use of fertilizer is also bad for the health of the soil okay so that can be an example but the exact meaning of sustainable gastronomy is that we are also keeping in mind the environment the ecology while we are choosing the food for ourselves that sustainable gastronomy i hope that the concept is clear to all of you now let's move ahead to the next question which team has won the 2022 nba championship so what is that first of all it is national basketball association and this is basically the biggest of the big uh, basketball championship in the north america and it has been won by golden state warriors in 2022 it is basically played in america only so this basketball team has won this championship in this year and it is a fourth win for this uh, or for this basketball team moving ahead how many goals has sunil chhetri scored in his career as of june 21 2022 so the right answer here is 84 guys it is a really a um, it is a moment of pride for all of us because sunil chhetri has become the top or we can say has become the highest goal scorer he is at the fifth position in the world okay highest means the fifth highest goal scorer and highest in india of course okay so let's first have a look at the goals of the top 5 players in the world first we have cristiano ronaldo from portuguese or uh, from portugal and his goals are the highest 117 then we have ali dai from iran 109 Mokhtar Gahari from Malaysia 89, Lionel Messi Argentine 86, and Sunil Chhetri and Frank 84. So these two people are sharing the position. Now, guys, if you consider the active players, the players who are still playing in the world, and those are Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. After these two people, Sunil Chhetri has become the third highest goal scorer. Okay. so this is a really really proud moment for all of us although football is not followed that religiously in india but still football is a really really uh, i would say popular sport outside india in many countries and even if you go in the south maybe some states and some uh, group of people have a really uh, we can say strong liking towards this sport so that makes it all the more i would say uh, popular news so that is the news about sunil chhetri and he is sunil chhetri who has made us proud and he is the captain of indian football team as well do remember one more thing of one more information that you need to know 
that chhetri has achieved this goal achieved his 84th goal during the afc asian cup that is being held in india itself and the location of this cup is vivekanand yuva bharati kridangan in kolkata so do remember the location do remember the uh, tournament in which chhetri has scored his 84th goal and the numbers of goals okay so that's all about this news moving ahead to the next question how many district uh, will be brought under the ambit of employees state insurance scheme in 2022 so recently employee state insurance corporation has announced to increase the coverage of this scheme across the india so it is not going to leave any place in india out of the ambit of the scheme now already the scheme is is under implementation in many districts apart from 148 districts so in this year in 2022 only 148 districts will be covered thus this scheme would be expanded across it okay so i have already told you it will be extended to every part of india by the end of 2022 uh, in 40 in 443 districts it is already under full implementation okay in 153 districts it is under partial implementation and 148 districts are districts where the scheme has not been implemented yet okay so when the corporation is saying that we are going to increase the implementation or the coverage of the scheme that means they are going to cover these uncovered districts as well moving ahead now these two are other information or the other development steps that esic has announced so esic has announced to set up 23 new hospitals and these hospitals will have a capacity of 100 beds now it has also announced to launch courses certificate courses across 10 disciplines in three medical facilities of esic and the medical facilities are at faridabad hyderabad and chennai these many informations would be enough okay the names of these places would be enough no need to memorize this it's just for your information moving ahead to the last question where will india's first government desalination plant be developed so first of all understand this point that it is not india's first desalination plant plant it is india's first government owned desalination plant okay now it will be developed at the h okay the h kalo the h kalo naam hi the h iska but theek hai this is the place where india's first government owned desalination plant will be developed now let's first have a look at the desalination park okay this is guys uh, a very easy picture that i found on the google and i have pasted it here this is describing the basic functioning of a desalination park so what is the basic idea behind the desalination d nation so we all know that the water of the ocean is salinated it has a lot of salt content in order to remove the salt content this is the technology that is used so it basically pumps the water then it purifies the water then it uh, disposes the brine into the ocean again and gives the fresh fresh water so that's the basic functioning no need to remember it it's just for your understanding now what's the purpose of it it is going to help the industries now industries also need water so all the industries located in the h area the h area in gujarat those industry will industries will get water from this plant okay earlier they used to take the water from the narmada river now the desalinated water from the sea will be given to these industry so it will help the water of river uh, first of all in conservation of the water and secondly uh, the contamination of that water will also be uh, will also be restricted okay now the plant will have a capacity of 100 million liters per day this is the huge capacity that the plant is going to have now the need of the industries in the h area is 200 mld but at present basically this plant has not been developed yet just 
the announcement of developing such plant has been made so once it will be completed it will have this much capacity and later on the capacity can be expanded so that is all about it uh, if you can then you can remember this much uh, amount this amount is important the capacity of this plant this is not required you can clearly skip this plant, uh, this part okay so i'll come to this but let me first show you the location of the hage so this is guys the location okay in baruch district the hage is located and this is your saurashtra this peninsula of gujarat is known as saurashtra and the above peninsula is known as kutch okay so i hope now it is clear this news is a bit clear to you and these are some of the recent developments that have taken place in gujarat like the establishment of Jap japanese industrial town at Sana, uh, Sanand, bulk drug park at Baruch, plastic park at Bhavnagar, multimodal logistic, logistics park at Ahmedabad, and medical devices park at Rajkot. So this is, these are some of the important developments. Do remember the locations of these developments, okay? On this note, guys, it's the end of this session. I'm going to end it. If you have any query, any suggestion, anything to discuss or give us a feedback, you are welcome in the comment section below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Have a good day. Prepare hard for the examination and try to learn while enjoying the content. Okay, goodbye.